Welcome to the Bracket Factory and welcome to the latest thrilling episode of the big V12 Speedster project. Now if you've been following this series you'll know that it's starting to get even more exciting because we're getting very close to seeing if the big 8.1 litre V12 American Le France engine will fit in that chassis. But of course before we do that we need to take the old engine and gearbox out so let's do that first. So, with the help of my trusty test pilot, uh, I got this Daimler gearbox out. It's all in really nice condition actually. Um, shame not to use it, but hey ho, I have a plan, I need to stick to it. But that's pretty good, that's out, quite easy. And then of course you've got the engine. Um, uh, and this is all looking very clean and nice. So obviously the next step is to lift the engine out. But before I do that, I'm going to have to make another trolley, get some more casters, make a wooden trolley so I can wheel the thing around before, um, before somebody takes it away. So that'll be the next step. Right, I've got some casters, I've made a trolley, time to take the engine out. I reckon I should be able to do it a bit quicker this time. Right, engine out and record time. I think that took me about 30 seconds. It's really, really nice engine, really clean. Now, I think I found another owner for this, which is good for him, because it's a bargain. And it's good for me, because it means I can clear some space. So let's take a quick look at that big hole, shall we? So behold, we have a hole. A pretty big hole, I'd say. It's got to be a good six feet long. Pretty wide, but the question is, well, the big V12 engine fits inside it. So of course I could use the gantry that I used in episode three. That's the one where Brian and I risked life and limb to lower the engine into the bomb trolley. But of course that won't fit in the garage, it's way too high. I can't have this thing sitting out on the drive. So I've come up with a cunning plan, which I think in the long run will save me a lot of time and aggravation. So time to execute the plan.
So presumably you've worked out what it is. Yes, I've made a one-to-one -one scale replica of the block of the engine. Why? Because it's a damn sight easier to put in the chassis than the real thing. So let's have a quick look. So here we have the wooden block and there's a few critical dimensions. Obviously the, the overall diameter and width of this bell housing, the width of the rear engine mounts and the height with respect to the bell housing and block. You've got the length of the block, which is a bit of a whopper. Then you've got the width and height of the front engine mounts, again, with respect to the block. Now, on the front of here, we're going to have the pulleys. There's a cat come to invade. We're going to have the pulleys. That's another six or eight inches. And obviously on the back, we have a gearbox. And to give you a sense of scale, this is not my first rodeo. And this is a Ford Crossflow block that I made a few years ago to help me do exactly the same thing and as you see this will fit inside this one quite happily and if you still got not if you still not got a handle on the scale here's a banana banana for scale so now it's time to offer this up to the chassis to see if it fits but before I do that I think I'm going to have to take a few bits and bobs off the chassis this lot is all going to be in the way this is all to do with the brake pedal and of course this whopping great brake pedal is not going to stay here anyway so i might as well take that off and this spring and also all this all this mechanism here this is some this connects uh, all the way back to the petrol tank which is some kind of pump or valve I'm not sure uh, anyway it needs to come off so I think without further ado I'm going to take a few more bits and bobs off probably probably with the help of him what do you say nothing Right, a bit of elbow grease later, and we've got a box full of brackets. And they're all really nice brackets. So we're going to be keeping all of these. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to use them for, but all these levers are quite nice. It's all really well made, all really nice castings. Um, obviously, we've got a big hole now. Uh, we've cleared all these bits off. But we can also take a good look at some of the detail. Now, on the inside of this chassis frame, We've got this sort of lattice uh, strengthening gusset, which has been welded. Um, what I may well end up doing is cutting this out and actually boxing it in completely to make it nice and strong. But this is also really nice. This this uh, this is the big casting, which holds the steering column up, uh, which is very very nice. This will probably move backwards. 
at least there I'd say but you know time will tell on that um, this is the brake linkage mechanism this lever arm uh, which goes down to this this whole assembly mounted on the thrust front um, axle I suppose and this cross beam this is all really really nice this is all keep is all stay I'm going to stick with uh, rod uh, brake mechanism this thing here can't really see it from this angle but it's actually a jack it's actually an in-situ jack probably won't keep the jack um, I might keep the jack I don't know um, anyway it's all really really nice but um, I think now it's time to try and uh, offer up the engine well I say engine wooden block but before I do that, I want to say a massive thank you to everybody who's been to the shop and bought one of these t-shirts. makes a massive difference and it's really given me the drive to crack on with the project. So if you do want to support the channel, please consider going to the shop and checking out these t-shirts. And also, please do keep the pictures coming of your stuff. Some of the things that you guys have make me look like a rank amateur. So I'm going to be sharing some of those in future episodes. And talking of people with cool stuff, when you finish watching this video, please go and check out Michael and Moose's channel called In The Ludes. Now, Ludes is Dutch for shed, and they have got a very impressive shed full of lots of cool stuff. Just recently, they've been working on a six-cylinder Ford flathead, which they've just got starting, and Michael's had to do some pretty amazing stuff just to the carb to get it working. So go and check that out. Right, time to put that block in the chassis. So there you have it. The block is in the chassis, sort of. So initial observations are that the block is not wider than the chassis, which is which is good because if it was, then we'd have a bit of a problem on our hands. So that's that's good. Secondly, um, at the front, this um, going to need at least another three or four inches. Before the, before the pulleys even get behind this front cross member, which is in front of the line of the axles. More about that later. So it needs to come back quite a lot. It's going to have to come back at least four inches just to fit in, so back to here. Which tells me these um, uh, cruciform chassis members are in the way. The gearbox is going to come back to about there so lever is going to be about there somewhere so obviously all of this is in the way um, the steering column bracket is obviously going to be completely in the way <laughs> because the engine block is going to be up here somewhere so this is obviously all going to move back anyway at least at least a foot not quite sure where so um, good that I've dropped it in, but it's now it's time to come up with a cunning plan. So the big question was, does it fit? Well, the answer is sort of yes and no, or rather no and yes. No, it doesn't fit straight in, but yes, it can be made to fit. And of course, in order to do that, I need a bit of a cunning plan. So step one of the cunning plan is to remove everything that's in the way. We've got the master cylinder, we've got the reservoir, various bits of linkage. So they all have to be stripped out to clear the decks. Step two is to remove as little as possible, but as much as is needed to get the block in the chassis. Uh, I need to bear in mind the front pulley distance. I just want to get the block in the chassis. Step three is to do the same for the gearbox. I can make a profile uh, of the shape of the gearbox. I can put it on the block and I can see where everything is going to fit so I can remove the material. Now at this stage, I need to make sure I don't actually take the entire cruciform out. I want to keep the two side rails tied together. Uh, I don't want them to move apart or you know side to side. So I need to remove as little as possible at this stage. Step four is to take stock. 
because where I'm up to now is the minimum viable position for the engine and box in the chassis for it to effectively work. But of course, it's not the optimum position. Um, it can't move any further forwards, but it may well move further backwards for two reasons. One, to make it look right. There's a kind of this golden line of the center uh, of the axle having everything behind that. Um, although the car that I'm inspired by is not quite like that. The radiator is forward of the front axle. But probably more importantly is to get the center of gravity further back to get more weight on the rear axle and less off the front because this is a big old lump. So I need to work out how far back I need to move it. I also need to consider the height of the engine in the chassis. Now I know that the rear engine mounts sitting on the chassis level is about right, there or thereabouts, but the front engine mounts are actually lower than the rear ones. So I'm gonna to have to construct some kind of cradle to support those. When I've decided how far back it's got to go, I need to do more surgery. And then step five or six, I've lost track now, I need to re-engineer the cruciform and the shear plate to tie everything back together, make it super bomb proof and work around the engine that I've got. So it's as simple as that really. But if you wanna see any of that, you're gonna to have to tune in next time. So if you've not already subscribed, please hit subscribe. Please hit like if you've liked what you've seen. Please do leave me a comment. I really wanna know what you think about what I have done or any ideas for what I need to do next. But for now, I think that's about it. So thanks for watching.